What's up, guys, and welcome back to Hashtag Sports. Today's episode, we're going to be exploring some little tidbits of information about the NFL draft that you may or may not know. Did the Buffalo Bills really lose in the Stephon Diggs trade? What would be your ideal scenario with, for the Buffalo Bills leaving the draft coming this uh, Thursday? Obviously, me and Paul are here. We got all that and a bunch of chaos. Make sure you hit that like button. Let's YouTube know it's a good video. And make sure you hit that subscribe button to join the team. Let's get on to the video. Uh, welcome to the Buffalo Bills offseason as we near close to the NFL draft. Uh, all eyes are on the Buffalo Bills with uh, an empty receiver room. But uh, Mario and I are going to kind of go back and forth a little bit. I, uh, I saw Mario yesterday. We avoided talking about this. <laughs> Uh, solely because the number of episodes that we've lost to casual conversation uh, are are in the millions at this point. So yeah. we avoided talking about this. Um, and I think it's something that you need to talk about. As you go into the draft, the Bills are in position to obviously be receiver needy. They, there's a couple other positions that they need because, you know, obviously you, you let go of Mitch Morse. The word is Connor McGovern's your center if you want to choose to believe that you've got a right tackle going into a contract year. You've got a 30 year old Rasul Douglas as your CB one and uh, a, uh, a former first round pick in Kyrie Elam on the team. Still uh, you've got a whole new safety tandem. You, there's a lot going on here, right? And yeah. the bills have plenty of things to address, but most people are concerned most about the offense. So Mar. Before we get into that, we want to thank Mr. Rogers Homes for being the sponsor of Hashtag Sports. If you are looking for real estate in Arizona, investment real estate, or to relocate, contact Sean. You can catch them. Mr. Rogers Homes now has an app if you're looking for real estate. Go and check out Mr. Rogers Homes, your wealth building team in Arizona. Mario. Sir. The, the draft is ever approaching, right? Yes. And free agency is, isn't done. And I think people kind of forget that at this time of the year, right? There's still... Uh, players that are out there. Uh, Buffalo obviously brings in, uh, you know, Curtis Samuel. They bring in uh, uh, the speedy wide receiver from Denver, Hinton. Is that, am I right there? Stop that, it. You know who it is. You is love that him. the speedy receiver? That's, in any case, um, Buffalo has made some minor additions. And I call Curtis Samuel a minor addition, right? Because we've seen this type of contract last off season, right. With Diante Hardy and, and to a lesser extent, Trent Sherfield. So is Buffalo done at the wide receiver position, or is this a draftable position for them where you got to leave the first round with the receiver? Oh, it's 100% a draftable position for the Buffalo bills. And I think a lot of people in bills, mafia and hashtag nation wish that they take a wide receiver and not only take a wide receiver, they trade up to get that wide receiver. There's a lot of guys on, on the board, uh, I think it's a it's a huge draft class right now with a lot of the guys, but I don't think the Bills have the resources to get where they need to go to get that big, impactful player. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously we're talking about Harrison, we're talking about neighbors, we're talking about Dunze. Uh, I don't think they're going to go up that high. You, you think probably a McConkey or a Thomas can fall to the Buffalo Bills. Um, God forbid if the Buffalo Bills go with an edge in this draft. <laughs> the, the the chaos that will happen if, if they go that, defense they go defense if they, if they do go defense yes yeah. um but that being said <laughs> i wouldn't be mad if they took jackson powers johnson to tell you the truth you just would, love hyphenated last names on jerseys i maybe i do <laughs> I, I don't want to pay more for it like what, what I'm saying is, you got to get the most for your money right they don't charge do. by the letter <laughs> <laughs> That being said, uh, I do not think that McGovern is your center. I yeah. so, I just strongly believe that. And I don't. I could you know put it in the comment section if you guys disagree with me. It, but I mean, could he play center? Yeah, he could play center. You had two of them on the team at one point, and due to um, you know a cap casualty in Mitch Morse, and you, you basically gave Bates back to, <laughs> to but back another to cap casualty, right? Yeah, very so true. Another cap casualty. Um, you know he he could play it, but I don't I don't see that. If Powers Johnson is on the board, I'm not going to be mad at it. A lot of Bills Mafia will because you don't like that stuff. But you know the number one ticket in this offense is Josh Allen, and you have to try to protect Josh Allen. And I, I'll never get upset about going for offensive or defensive line. I remember when they drafted uh, Ed Oliver. A lot of people maybe were upset they wanted different picks there, but you're never going to go wrong going with a lineman, an interior lineman. 
you know, mm-hmm. on either side of the ball. So do they need help at the wide receiver position? Well, let's just let's say this. If the Buffalo Bills are not going to pick a wide receiver, uh, you have some very interesting, you know, takes as far as what happens as soon as the draft starts, Paul. And yeah. I do I'd like you to inform the people as you know, many times that we do here at hashtag sports, we just try to give you guys some information that we have. So obviously before the draft starts, your, your numbers have to match up. Mm-hmm. Correct. Like yeah. when you have to have on your, on your bottom line, you have to have enough money to sign the draft picks that you have going mm-hmm. into the draft. Correct. Right. Correct. Yep. Yeah. You have to have enough cap space to sign your draft picks. So That's what right. happens at the draft? So that's where things get interesting, right? So the draft is sort of this weird uh, sort of pause button in the NFL financially, right? Because there's so many picks that get moved. And we're talking like when players get dealt for picks, like there's millions of dollars in the shuffle uh, every minute at the NFL draft. So uh, while Buffalo will need the space to, uh, to be able to pay the guaranteed contracts of the players that they are, of the picks that they're going into the draft with, if you were to... I don't know, get into the draft and then make a draft day trade with San Francisco for somebody like Brandon Ayuk, you get time to figure out the dollars there. You don't have to make the dollars work right away. And that's yeah. kind of, that's unusual within the NFL. Oftentimes what has to happen is you can, uh, when you trade for a player, you have to submit to the office. You have to remain under the salary cap. Like there's a whole big process that goes into it. Um, and with the NFL draft, it's treated just a little bit differently because of the volume of transactions that happen at the draft. So if you see Buffalo trade for a receiver before the draft, uh, you're probably, you're wishing for something that you're not going to see, right? It's, it's just financially unlikely. Um, however, draft day trade Buffalo gets some time to figure out how to make those contracts work. And again, a player like Brandon Ayuk, he's going to come over with a fully guaranteed salary. You could take that fully guaranteed salary. Was it more 14 million? I think 14. He's, yeah, 14. Mm-hmm. Let's say you sign him to a five-year contract extension. You're going to guarantee him that $14 million anyway, right? So you yeah. could you could replace that money pretty pretty easily and make him a very happy and wealthy man uh, and ultimately lower that cap number with without much effort. So what I'm saying is don't look for the bills to do much right now. Um, but I think that's sort of the interesting part of the next point that I want to get to, Mar, is while the draft is something that I think every Bills player or every Bills member of Bills Mafia is targeting, right? When when Minnesota dealt Stefan Diggs, and, and I th- we're going to talk about Diggs specifically. I don't think this is necessarily about the player. Let's just remove the player. Let's just look at the circumstances. I think the player kind of clouds this a little bit, right? So we look at Minnesota dealing their wide receiver too. And that was in Stefan Diggs, right? They do that and they acquire Justin Jefferson. But what were the bonuses to do that? Well, you already had Alan Thielen as your number one. So you're really just drafting a wide receiver too. They grab Justin Jefferson, avoid Jalen Regeer. Congratulations, Minnesota. But they had established quarterback play, right? Mm-hmm. So investing in the wide receiver position in the draft does make sense. We see a lot of teams try and rebuild immediately and draft a young quarterback and a young wide receiver. And those things don't often work out well, right? Probably what the it, Bears are going to do. But that's right. The Bears are probably going to do that. But you saw Buffalo when they drafted Josh Allen. What did they do? They took a quarterback on the other side of the field and said, listen, if they don't, if, if Allen doesn't, he doesn't work out, if we, yeah, we, we've got another, we've got another lottery ticket of a team captain, right? Like that was the idea, but specific to what Buffalo is in right now, they're in a different position than when they traded away that pick that was ultimately used on Jefferson Jefferson because they had a young quarterback. They didn't have the opportunity to get uh, players that to, to reshape that wide receiver room. Right. Are they though? Are they in a different situation? As far as Allen's experience, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, When you have an established quarterback, I think you could take chances like this a little differently. Now, mind you, is it scary as hell? Oh my God! Like this, that wide receiver room is, is it's not good. Oh yeah, it's but not I, good. Well, what I will say is that we oftentimes go off the pattern of what Brandon Bean does because yeah. he has established a pattern already by mm-hmm. the time you know. I mean, well, he's at Allen for that entire pattern, and he's been improving every year. Mm-hmm. Yet the pattern has not changed. Mm-hmm. The Bills are in need of a wide receiver, just like they were in 2020. I know, mm-hmm. I know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. That this, the, what happens in the NFL majority of the time is that you bring in a veteran wideout 
to help your court, young quarterback. Mm -hmm. And then once he knows the ropes, and they do it with a lot of guys, not just not just receivers, because you're still on that rookie deal. Mm -hmm. And that's where this concept of the freaking window comes in that pisses yeah. me off. No that's end. Right. Yeah. Oh, the window's closed. The window's closed. Brady had a 20-year window, and it wasn't because of who they drafted in the first round. Right. So please stop yeah. with this nonsense. Right. Oh, God, the fact that I had to use Brady to prove a point kind of makes me sick a little bit. Hey, Tom Brady said Josh Allen's going to be the next quarterback to win a Super Bowl, so you can't hate the man all that the much, next, at least at least in the next eight months. you got to realize how that question was asked. What quarterback <laughs> that hasn't won yet? See, that's how we asked him. But we look about that. What's the, you know, people can probably point to Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. Like, mm -hmm. Burrow wasn't an established quarterback by the time Chase got no, there. No. So, but they had played together. That's mm -hmm. the, you know, that's, that's the, the exception, not right. the rule. Like, that's what yeah, some people Higgins was already there, right? Yeah. You already had Higgins. And now Higgins yeah. is, is, you know, Higgins is out there. Again, yeah. it's, it's one of those circumstances, though, where I think financially, as you start investing in other pieces, you don't have a choice but to trim the fat somewhere. And in Buffalo, you chose to trim the fat. It, the wide receiver position because you had to you had to get out of the digs deal that you restructured and extended the 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 you know the prior season, but you're in a circumstance, Mar, where you brought it up earlier. Spencer Brown is in a contract year, yes, right? He like, is. That's a big deal. That's a very big deal because this team will not want to be paying two tackles. They they're not going to pay two tackles. They're going to they're going to draft another right tackle. Maybe it'll be this year. Maybe it'll be next year. But Buffalo has proven over and over again. They're just they're going to draft tackles every year. It's a premium position. They can't afford it in free agency. Well, what other position can't they afford in free agency? Wide receiver. Right. Like this is the cycle that you go on when you or have corner. an established quarterback. Well, or corner. Or corner. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm just looking positions. I'm just looking at the free agents for the Buffalo Bills for next year. Mm -hmm. Top of that list is Rasul Douglas. Yep. And then you got Gregory Rousseau. Mm -hmm. Might be yeah. a mercenary yeah. uh, for some other teams. Mike Edwards at safety. And then you have uh, <laughs> Will Clapp. I just like saying his name. But the point is, you do have some very high priced positions that are going to be free agents that you have to draft and hit in the draft. Mm -hmm. As many times as you can. It's it, right. But what the fact is, the fact that it matters is, with the Buffalo Bills and the success that they have had, we've already seen over the past two years, maybe past two or three years, I'll have to check my math, guys have been poached off of the Bills when they cut them. Yep. That's the problem. Like, you got to draft these guys and keep them on your team. You can't let them go to the practice squad because they'll get poached. Right. And they'll go on to other teams. Like, That's absolutely And right. we've talked about that all the time with teams like, yo, know, why let – we let let them do the scouting for us. Like, mm -hmm. why do you think that Levi Wallace or Dane Jackson have jobs now at other places in the league? Mm -hmm. They went with Frazier and McDermott, the two guys that know how to coach and scout and, and develop mm -hmm. safeties. Why wouldn't right. you? Why wouldn't you take those guys on? Right. And as bad as the corner position got, wouldn't you have loved to have Nick McLeod, who you you know who you had on this team, but lost because of roster management, right? Like there's mm -hmm. there's players that you invest resources in that you don't get anything out of because you have to play the roster game, right? Yeah, or you're taking them on and taking them off, and that's why Buffalo having so many picks just doesn't check out to me, right? Like I, I know they need these players, but it's not like Buffalo to want to we'll take 10 players and then say, well, we'll, well just keep the best six. You know, maybe, That's maybe with, I know, I know what you're saying though, Paul, but maybe with what happened with Diggs mm -hmm. forces their hand. Maybe they didn't want to go and leave with 10 picks. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have to go back. How many do they have? They put nine, 10, something like that. Uh, yeah. They traded two for they traded two of them. They traded two more. So they have nine. Check well, me on only the one of them was this year. I'll pull it up on overthecap.com. But if they have 10, if they have nine, if they have 10, you're, th you're saying to yourself, well, typically the pattern for, for Bean is they, they walk away with like six, maybe seven. Mm -hmm. That makes sense because they move, they move and shake. That's fine. But with what happened with Diggs, $54 million of dead cap, mm -hmm. you're just probably just getting the best athlete. Like the, their draft philosophy won't change much. Right. They're going to take the best athlete at the position that's just raw and well, say, hey, we, we can coach him up. And Mar, here's the way the picks, they do have 10 picks, by the way. 10, so okay. Very good. Um, they have to account for $2.7 million in space 
for those picks, right? So they have to have 2.7 mil in space. So not a they lot. They currently have 2.9. Yeah, so they're there, right? If they do nothing else, they're there. But that's, um, it, it, it fluctuates too because the actual money you need for those picks sometimes will change. Yeah, not just at the draft, off, but it will. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, ultimately speaking, you have pick 28, pick 60, and then you don't pick again until 128, 133, 144, 160, 163. So they've got a big pocket of picks where they've got five picks within, you know, 50, they've got what, five picks within just about 50 selections, right? So yeah. that that's a big pocket to deal because no third round pick, right? That's a big problem for Buffalo. You know, that's, that's a big problem. They do have a lot of tag. I saw a lot of tag numbers though. Like if you trade 28 and like, one of those 133s, mm -hmm. if you trade a, a 144 and a 160, you still have 163 sitting there. You know, you yeah. have three fifth round picks. Right. With the way well, that this team has been able to draft in the later rounds, mm -hmm. you trust that out of Bean. You know, I, something right. he hasn't done. Voshan Joseph? Mm, no. That, that's a rarity. Right? Yes. That's a rarity. It is. It is. Yeah. But you trust him more often than not to take mm -hmm. a guy that, will be an impact player, which not many people expect a lot from those guys. I mean, did a lot of people expect a lot of stuff out of Khalil Shakir? I don't well, think they did. And then in the no. second half of the year, this man blew up. So I'm, I, I want to change the conversation a little bit as far as the bills in the draft, because I think the beginning of the season was Ken Dorsey trying to show the league that Josh Allen was a quarterback first. Right. And I think people were ultimately unhappy with that result. It was very bipolar, um, you know, and it, yeah. it was a big time struggle. And again, there could have been politics going and playing into that. Like, who knows? Right. Yeah. But when Brady finally takes over, what do you see is you see Josh Allen, the athlete back at quarterback. And it was less about staying in the pocket and more about let's just get five yards out of this. Right. Like the offense really changed, changed temperament in that respect. Right. So while some of the concepts were the same, the delivery of those concepts was very different. Mm -hmm. So does that mean when you have Josh Allen, the athlete, that you could dumpster dive for wide receivers? Right. Why are you paying wide receivers at that point? Right. How like, long do we want his career to be? I, I don't think that matters. Yeah, it does. I don't think it does. Paul, when you're. <laughs> It's kind it of tough because we have to put an asterisk next to it because the last eight games, last nine games of the year, it was, listen, but you, I got no other option. He has to run. He has to yeah. dive around the field. He has to be an animal. Well, and he had a and he had a, he had a bum shoulder the whole season. He did. He did. Yeah, I don't season. think it's been fully healed at, at all. But the point was, I think they took the handcuffs off of him. Um, and I will stand by that. This is a hill I will die on, guys. Hashtag Nation Bills Mafia. I really think they told Dorsey, listen, we had a front row seat for Cam Newton. In the first five years of both of their careers, Cam Newton and Josh Allen ran exactly the same. And we all saw how far Cam fell off the cliff mm -hmm. when he went to New England. Yeah. They figured they wanted more, you know, let's make him more of a, let's let him stay in the pocket. He can use his legs if he needs to, but mm -hmm. we don't want these design runs. His carries per game almost doubled in those mm -hmm. last eight, nine games. Yeah. I don't know the exact math, but it seemed like it did. But the point was, I think we have to put a little asterisk next to that because I don't think that's how they really want Josh to play. Yeah. I think they want him to find these guys early and often and get the ball out of his hands. Why else would you – how do you defend having two tight ends – paying one all this money and the other one drafting in the first round last year, unless you don't want to get the ball out of his hands quick or unless, have a red zone threat. Hey, listen, you know, if you're going to run two tight end sets, maybe you go to two backs. <laughs> it's Carolina after all. <laughs> I'm going home guys. I'm, done. <laughs> I, I'm clearly kidding, right? I'm no, clearly not. kidding. Paul has but, not believed in a fullback for 12, 15 years. He doesn't know why they're employed at this point. Uh, no. Yeah, no. God, no. But what I, my 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 larger point there is while the Bills have a need at wide receiver, right? I, I yeah. don't think that there's a debate there. I think that's they have a need at wide receiver, how they choose to address it. Um, I mean, you saw what there's you're going to you have to make the comparison to Kansas City, right? You look at the receivers they had and say, I, I don't know how they did it. Right. 
I, I don't know. And you look at what you're going to have to pay receivers in Buffalo. You're like, uh, maybe we'll just see how this goes. Right. Mm-hmm. But there was one free agent that has a connection to Buffalo that I heard from you a moment ago before, before we went on air. And it, I, it made me a little sick to my stomach. Right. Cause I don't, don't love it, mm-hmm. but it would make headlines. Do you remember what you told me? Do you remember the connection that you had mentioned? The connection that I had mentioned was the, I want to make sure I get his name because uh-huh. I have it right here. Adam Henry. Mm-hmm. And yep. For those of you in Bill's Mafia who are curious about who's Adam Henry, I've never seen him as a free agent because he's not. <laughs> he's the wide receivers coach for the Buffalo Bills. He has had multiple stops and experience with who? What's the guy's name again? Paul, I can't remember what's his name. He uh, played for he played for the Giants. Then he uh, played for yeah, Cleveland. Cleveland. And then he then he went to Baltimore and was total total dog, dog shit. <laughs> so bad. He's cheap. So bad. He would be. He would he be would now. Be, be better he wasn't then. Yeah, but no. But Odell Beckham. Now, let me before you guys start racing to the comment section to tell me I'm an idiot for Odell Beckham. We're just giving you guys information. That's history there. This guy yeah. was in New York with Beckham, and I don't want to say developed him, but he was the receivers coach there. And then he went to Cleveland. And then Beckham went to Cleveland. So maybe that guy's voice is a lot louder in that room than we know. Mm-hmm. So if we need a veteran wideout prior to the draft or even at the draft, if they don't get who they need, a one year band aid for Beckham is it? Is that the worst part? You I, put you yeah. put Odell Beckham on this roster right now with Justin Shorter, Khalil Shakir, Curtis Samuel. He's not there to teach Shakir or Samuel, yeah, how to survive in the NFL. This whole mentor nonsense that we hear no, he's people not. talk about, they, but they, it doesn't happen. It do, being it in the room, happen. being in the room with Shorter or Hollins could have an impact. I'm just saying it could have an impact because as we know, Diggs probably wasn't that mentor to these guys. So even though he was a captain, I think that's what they were hoping to get out of him was when he was a captain, like, Hey, listen, leadership role, got to look more than just yourself. And to the media, there were times that he did that. Right. Um, But if, Obviously, he got dealt. There was something behind the scenes that we're not really. Well, Paul, to. you know, you look at his story. splits at the end of the season. You're like, ah, oh, yeah. there might be a story there. Last eight games, he averaged four one receptions TD. for 40 yards and one yeah. touchdown. Yeah. yeah. Um, quick story, though. Um, it was a funny thing you meant that, you know, I'm the a football historian as far mm-hmm. as that goes. Yeah. They elected Joe Namath. 1969 Jets elected Joe Namath captain because they said you have to give him responsibility because he's too wild. <laughs> and as soon as he got elected captain, he started assuming a leadership role. Um, Philbin, who was the defensive end at the time, said that Namath still thinks to this day he was elected captain because of his leadership. It was the complete opposite. Yeah. Yeah. And then no. Namath goes, That was one of my best honors I've ever had in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an uncommon story. Jerry Glanville traded Favre to Green Bay because, like, listen, this guy's an alcoholic. Atlanta's too busy for him. We got to send him to the farms. He's going <laughs> to drink himself out of the league. He, and yeah, really. And that's true. That's Favre was a party animal. He's like, Listen, Atlanta's too busy for you. We got to get you, we got to get you out in them, out in them countries. <laughs> out, out with that, hey, the cold weather. 100%. But uh, go, going back to the team, Paul. Let's 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 end it on this real quick. Mm-hmm. Unless you got another point, you got another no. point to make. I want to put this out there for, and I'm telling you guys a lot of stuff to put in the comment section. Don't worry about it. I'll be in there too. Don't worry. No. no. Um, first of all, th- let's let's just break it down this way: offense or defense. What would you, what would you like the Buffalo Bill? Because it's currently right now. You got Mike Edwards, rap played a little bit. You got Mike Edwards, and that's it mm-hmm. as far as new starters. Mm-hmm. I mean, Rap's, Rap had playing time. He wasn't a starter consistently, but he had playing time in that secondary. Really the only guy that's going to be the new guy in that room. 
You know what I mean? As far mm-hmm. as that goes, as far as your yep. starters. On the other side of the ball, you got Curtis Samuel, McGovern, or D- Curtis Samuel, David Edwards, McGovern in a different position, and that's it. Mm-hmm. So a lot of you know continuity could still be kept with the Buffalo Bills moving forward. Mm-hmm. I just want the chat to tell me offense or defense. Where do you want them to go? Obviously, we'll get into more specifics in a later episode, but I'm very curious what you guys would you be upset if they uh, maybe I should phrase the question. Would you be upset if they went defense? Like I wouldn't. I really wouldn't. They'd be throwing. They'd be throwing their firstborns into the pit at the. At the <laughs> Who's the maniac from UCLA? The defensive end. Oh God! I, it's Latu? off the top of my head, dude. I've got Latu. so many names rattling around in my head right now. <laughs> yeah, it's Latu. It's that guy. Um, six five two seventy. I wouldn't be mad at that. Hey, especially. Listen. Hey, what do we tell about? What do we say about cycling positions? You're probably going to lose Greg Rousseau next year. Who's yeah. taking that spot? I think you know, you know, the Spencer Brown conversation's fascinating because you that's just signed Lael Collins, you know. Yeah, just a well, one year deal. If it was two years, I'd I'd say so, that's the band. So what? But what so are you what? saying you put him in there for a year to learn the system? No, what I'm saying is you get Lael Collins on a one year deal and you should know what you have pretty quick. Right? He's, like you, he's you a freak. probably know already. He's you probably already know what you got. He's over yeah, 30, sure but he's a freak. Yeah, sure is. Put him next to Osiris Torrance. Can he give you can he give you time to draft a tackle this year? Can he give you nine games? Different conversation, man. I know. Let me just keep That's doing different it. conversation. All right. Um hashtag nation. Like like I like we said at the onset of the episode, go hit all the socials, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Make uh, all our episodes will go to iTunes and Spotify. Make sure that you stay tuned for the hashtag sports draft show. Yep, we're yeah. doing it here. Day one, we're gonna have it uh, virtual, and day two. We are going to be um, collaborating with the Rock Power Report. We know how much you guys in love studio group. with them in studio. So yeah. there might be a few beverages. So make sure you stay tuned for that and some of the promos. Guys, go like our socials. I know you guys. We we got about close to forty five hundred people on our YouTube, but we got like two three hundred on some of the other socials. Go help us out, will you? And we're out of here. <laughs>